Hi, my name is Mark Bailey from Bailey Guitars, and this is my amazing workshop. We make all kinds of guitars, acoustics, electrics, arch tops, bass guitars, custom guitars, special edition guitars, and even the ukulele. So all our electric guitars come in three flavours, in fact all our guitars come in three flavours. We've got our standard, which is our workhorse guitars, best bang for your buck, high quality guitar, all the best parts we can find but without spending a fortune. That's our standard range. Any additions or changes to the spec, then the guitar becomes a special. For instance, I make a lot of guitars for shows and I need something to show off my guitars and techniques. So if we've got a nice piece of wood in, for instance, I might make a, a bandsman special and you might find that in the shop. So they're showpiece guitars. Often the special guitars are my best work. Um, I'm showing off what I can do basically with the specials. Um, beyond that are custom guitars. If you don't see what you want in the shop, but you like the Bandsman, the Curve or the Exotica, and I can make you a custom version, no problem at all. You just tell me what wood you want and parts, and hardware, colours, anything you want basically and I can make it for you. So our basic range is the Bandsman, the Curve and the Exotica and they come in three flavours, standard, special and custom. Because we make our guitars one at a time, it's not a problem for me to make you a left-handed version of any guitar you can see on our website. So as I've already explained, any of our models can be a standard or a special or a custom. Um, but the special is not to be confused with our special edition guitars. I'm just going to show you a few of those. Sometimes I've got a really beautiful piece of wood. It doesn't fit any of our particular models. I'll make a guitar around that piece of wood. Here's three examples, for instance. Um, might also be a certain piece of hardware that I'd like to try, a type of pickup, for instance. You can see all our special edition guitars on our online shop if you click the special edition tab. So thanks for watching, that's all I've got to say, now you know everything there is to know about Bailey Electric Guitars. Look out for um, future videos about our acoustics, arch tops, ukuleles, custom guitars, special editions, one string bass, um, five string bass, arch top, five string bass, fretless bass with a trem, um, all that kind of stuff. Cheers. Hey folks, welcome back to the workshop um, for Guitar Making Channel, guitarmaking.co.uk. Today 
We're talking about clamping and holding. Woohoo! How can that possibly be interesting? Wow. Well, for me, guys and folks, as you've probably heard me say many times before, I think it's half the battle. Holding your workpiece is half the battle. Once you've worked out how you're gonna hold it, then actually doing the job is often quite straightforward. So I'm gonna show you um, today um, what I think are some of the essential clamps and devices you'll need, but I'm also gonna go into some of the more advanced stuff that you definitely don't need, but um, makes it interesting, doesn't it? So why not? Um, so specifically, I'm gonna be um, just briefly mentioning our bag press that we've got from Darren there. Head over to bagpress.com if you want to know more about that. So vacuum press, I'm gonna briefly mention, but mostly skip over because we've already made an entire um, series on how to use the bag press for um, making guitars, where Darren from bagpress.com came to the workshop and we filmed a whole masterclass um, we did about four or five different operations, I think, to show what you can do with the bag press, um, or at least to get you started. So uh, I'm going to mention the bag press in brief, but we're not going to um, we're not going to use it in anger today. I'm going to save that for another video because coming up, we are going to be. Um, I've got a pile of laminations here that Darren kindly sent that we're going to attempt to make into an arch top plate at some point in the next couple of weeks. So watch out for that. Um, but today we're going to concentrate on clamping and holding and um, I am going to, as a little treat for you, I'm going to be getting out the string tension simulator. So that's kind of like well, probably the most fancy clamp that I use um, and obviously you can tell by the name it's there to simulate string tension. So when we're levelling the frets or even levelling the fretboard if you want, um, you can work on the fretboard as if the strings are on and as if it's under string tension. So I'm just gonna quickly set that up in a bit um, towards the end and show you how that works. But um, to start with, I'm gonna show you what I think are the essential tools that you'll need to build a guitar. And we're gonna start with, I would start with an electric guitar, something quite basic like this. So this is the guitar that I built on the, we did the lockdown um, Lucy special. So if you look on the, channel you'll see a playlist um, build your own guitar the lockdown special or something I called it I can't remember but I built this whole guitar live for the benefit of YouTube audience and um, yeah so you can see me do every operation and if you want to go through it you'll see every clamp that I used um, but I've designed this guitar to be as simple as possible for the beginner to make um, so that's what it's all about you could um, customize it and I'll show you um, a few customizations today um, but usually everything you do is going to add it can add difficulty it can add it's obviously going to add time to the job um, and it'll probably add expense because you might need to buy and um, for instance if you wanted to put a fancy piece of wood on the top like a cap um, then you're going to need a lot more clamps to clamp that on so um, your build obviously is going to depend to some extent on your budget. And so I'll start off just by telling you what I think are the essentials. And then we'll go on to some fancy stuff like um, I'm going to show you just quickly how we glue a cap on. And uh, um, some bits and bobs to hopefully save you time and money. That's what this is all about in the end. At the end of the day, this is all about trying to save you time and money. So if you've got any questions about clamping and holding, then make sure to leave them in the comments. And um, we do always get round to them. If I can't answer it straight away, um, then we'll, we'll answer it at some point in the future. And um, you can also head over to the forum on guitarmaking.co.uk where, well, that's where we all hang out. And it folks, we're all there answering your questions, um, giving out advice and all that. So um, that's what we're all about at the Guitar Making Academy. We, we're not here just to show off. We don't mind doing a little bit of that, do we? But, <laughs> but we're mainly here to show you how you can do it. 
and then you can make your own YouTube channel and show off as much as you want. So basic clamps. I'll just say hello to everyone before we start. This is live, by the way. So um, yeah, I do tend to waffle on a bit and get a bit distracted. So um, that is what the, the Guitar Making Academy is all about, by the way. If you want the short edited versions of all this, then you can head over to the, to the website, become a premium member, and then you get access to all of my edited courses, which is build your own electric and acoustic, starting from scratch, starting with a blank piece of paper. You can pretty much design and build pretty much anything you want. And I'm there on hand to answer your questions if you get stuck. So yeah, thanks to all our new subscribers, by the way, awesome. Um, it is our premium members that really keep us going. So um, we really do appreciate that. Um, obviously, I, I appreciate that not everybody can afford that or wants to do that. So you can also become a supporter if you want, um, or you can even just join for free if you just want to be a lurker. And you even get um, some patterns and plans to download for free if you want to do that. And access to an amazing community of increasingly beautiful people. Our incredible community incredible. of genius luthiers oh, on yeah. hand to Rock answer all your questions. Rock and Roller says I need a pay rise. Yeah. <laughs> don't you. we all, don't we all? Yeah. Yeah, Carol needs a pay rise. So um, get in the super chat. This is for Carol. Super <laughs> <No>. chat. <laughs> Carol, she needs a bag of lentils. Yeah. We're saving up. And I'm, I'm still, I've only got enough for one sock and I'm saving up for a pair. <laughs> so yes, every bit, everything you can do really helps us and it keeps the Guitar Making Academy going. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully into the future. So cheers guys. So let's get on with it. Basic clamping and holding. So I'm going to start really, really basic. Um, this is my gripper mat, otherwise known as an aerobics mat. So Carol actually picked this up from the local charity shop and um, occasionally um, some of the old folks take up aer aerobics and they, old folks. they die off and they leave their... <laughs> <laughs> they leave their aerobics um, blankets behind and these make great gripper mats so let's include this in the clamping and holding so I do a lot of my work on there for instance I'll drop a body blank on and then look it won't move it's pretty solid it's quite surprising actually how much the gripper mat will actually grip so look out for a bit of that stuff you can buy it obviously proper gripper mats expensive but it's exactly the same as the stuff you'll find um, in your local charity shop, the old folks have thrown away their aerobics <laughs> mats because they're no use anymore. So gripper mat, excellent stuff. Double-sided tape. We use a lot of this. Thank you, Super Clunk's bought me some lentils. <laughs> Thanks, Super Clunk. <laughs> so we can't mention double-sided tape without mentioning masking tape. <laughs> <laughs> but please don't use masking tape as double-sided tape. Um, but you can use masking tape as a clamp, as you'll see later on I'm going to show you. Um, I use it for temporarily clamping on the binding when I'm making an acoustic guitar. And there are other um, places where we use masking tape for clamping, like for instance when you're doing a drawing, you can um, you can clamp on a piece of masking tape onto your drawing um, draw your, your lines on and, and you can take it off. Uh, you make sure it doesn't move while you're doing your tracing. So masking tape sounds daft, but it's super cheap and it can be handy. Um, obviously double-sided tape. So um, I'll do a little demo. If you're using double-sided tape, you need to get not carpet tape. Get the NEC approved stuff. We actually sell this on our website, but um, you don't have to buy it from us. You can get it from anywhere. Um, but it's called exhibition tape or NEC tape. Um, it's made so it doesn't um, destroy things when you stick it to them. Um, I just need a blade, Carol, if you can see a blade. Um, got a little site update coming up in a bit as well, folks. Um, when you're using this uh, double-sided tape, I always use a blade because I haven't got any nails, so I've spent hours trying to pick pick it up with a um, with, with my nails. Forget it. So 
for instance, if I wanted to stick my fretboard onto here to cut the fret slots, uh, let's get a, an actual fretboard blank, then we could use double sided tape. You could use one long strip, but I tend to prefer using smaller pieces. I think I use less, but I'm not entirely sure. And then what I do is pick the corner up like this. What you can do is just pick all, all the corners up and then just put it to one side until you're ready to use it. Um, now obviously if I was doing this for real, I would be carefully aligning it. I would draw center lines and make sure it aligns with the center line on my pattern. But, um, but today I'm not showing you how to make a fretboard. I'm just showing you how we use double sided tape for clamping and holding. So we can stick that down on our template and you'd be surprised how strong that sticks. It's really strong. Um, it's actually activated by pressure. So the harder you press, the harder it sticks. So here's another clamping and holding thing you might want to get hold of. This is a, um, a woodworker's vise. Um, mine's broken and uh, was it Steve who's actually donated some money for me to re um, get a new one? Yeah, Camber's Lang Steve. Camber's Lang Steve has actually donated some money so that I can get a, finally get a new one because um, my handles broke off. But uh, I... I, I get mine from, from Axminster and they, they're out of stock. They're still out of stock. They've been out of stock for months. I guess the supply chain is um, goosed. But um, I'm going to squeeze this in the vise and that activates the pressure tape. So as soon as um, the vices come in stock, I'm going to get myself a couple of new vices. So thanks for that, Canvas Lang Steve. Um, the harder you squeeze it, the harder the tape will stick. So this is a, a woodworker's vise. Um, you don't need one, not essential, but really handy. Um, you can clamp your necks in like this when you're working on them. Um, And I also I make an angled piece that goes in so that I can clamp, clamp in my tapered necks. I couldn't put my hands on that this morning though, so. So a, a vice is handy, um, a woodworker's vice. I'll just show you this other one here. This is another woodworker's vice, which is mounted into the bench. Now obviously you need a dedicated bench for this, which not everybody's got. And also they are a real pain to fit. Um, a real pain to fit <laughs> and to be honest I really like these ones because I like the way it sticks up above the bench so it gives me access all the way around whatever it is I'm working on so yeah these ones are good but I, I would get one of these if you're going to get a vise and they're, they're very cheap not expensive but again it's not essential you don't need one but I think every guitar maker worth his salt has probably got a vice, hasn't he? Let's face it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just show you um, how strong this tape is. I mean, look, I cannot move that. The way, the way to get it off is to bend this. Um, so when you're using double-sided tape, dust is your enemy. Um, as with any adhesive or glue, you want to keep your work area clean don't get any dust on it, otherwise it won't stick. And then to get it off, I'm just going to bend in a pattern. So see how it comes off nice and clean. And I haven't got to spend hours cleaning off my pattern either, because it comes off real easy. So that is NEC tape um, or exhibition tape, approved tape double-sided tape. Don't use um, cheap carpet tape because you'll spend longer um, actually working with the stuff, trying to get it off afterwards. 
you'll spend longer doing that than it takes to do your actual job. So, moving on. Actual clamps then. Let's talk about some actual real clamps. Oh no, not quite ready for that yet. Sellotape. Sellotape, right? Believe it or not, we use sellotape in guitar making. Um, as you'll see, um, towards the end later on, I'm going to play a slideshow, which is a complete acoustic build. And I'm going to point out all the clamps that we use along the way. Um, we use um, sellotape, believe it or not, to, to stick the binding on whilst the glue is drying. The advantage of sellotape, it's, it's transparent so you can see through it, which helps when you're doing um, awkward operations. It's flexible, so it's, it's great for doing those curved shapes on binding. Um, and it's cheap, so there's three good reasons to use it, eh? Um, and also, um, we've got an alternative method for um, gluing the body together. So that's the first of our clips. I'm going to play you a few clips today as we go, um, just to show you some like clamping and gluing operations actually happening. They're only like one minute clips, so don't get bored and switch off. But what I thought I would do is talk you through an electric guitar build um, just on my bench, and then I'm going to I've got a slideshow for an acoustic guitar build, which I'll talk over. So, um, obviously, if you're making an electric guitar, you need to start with a body blank. Can I, I've got a question before you move on. Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> body does, blank. Does sellotape tear the wood fibres? Well, it can do. You have to be careful with tape. Um, if you want the ins and outs of it, then you, you should really sign up on the course. But um, um, but what I will say is, uh, you can detack it. So if I'm putting this onto a soft wood like the front of an acoustic guitar, then what I would do is detack it. You just take a bit off, you stick it on your t-shirt, and then you lift it off. Or you can stick it onto your bench or any piece of cloth. You're basically detacking it. So it's not quite as sticky as it was before. So if I'm putting it onto um, softer woods like um, spruce, uh, acoustic guitar tops, or maybe even mahogany, you might want to put a layer down where it's detacked first, and then you can put a full strength layer on top of that. So yes, it can damage the wood if you're not careful with it. Um, I go through all that in detail on the courses. Um, there's another question. Yeah, we'll um, just uh, do questions as they come up, I think. So well, I think go for it. they're relevant, yeah. before you move on. We, so we are going to focus on clamping and holding today. Yeah. So if they're not relevant to that, we won't, we won't do them. Okay. We'll do them maybe afterwards. Right. Or if you do have any other questions, then just head over to the forum and ask them there. Okay. So um, Peter Stoyanov, Pepe, says, where can I buy a woodworker's bike? Hey, Pepe. Um, Pepe. Any hardware... Um, Pretty much any hardware shop of reasonable size should sell something like this. This one clips onto the bench, you see. So it's got a it's got a screw it clips onto the bench. So the other advantage of this is I can move it around and I can take it to uh, where I am, wherever I am. And so that's the advantage of that, rather than the fixed one where I have to go to it. So I, I would look for something like that. And and the advantage another advantage of this is it clips onto any table or bench. So, um, yeah, don't tell your wife or your mum, but you can put it on your kitchen table. Tell your mum. Think she'll notice. You could put some bits of wood to protect it, um, and then you can use it on pretty much any bench or any table. So here's a, a body blank that we would use. Now, we supply body blanks ready to work. Here's another one ready to work body blanks um, but they're usually two pieces of wood joined together for instance so um, obviously I'm going to recommend that you buy ready to work on blanks and that's going to make your life a lot easier but if you're um, 
using a two-piece body that you need to glue together and um, I've got a video on how to prepare this these surfaces by the way um, how to join the body blanks you'll find that on the channel and um, and I show two different methods of actually clamping them so here's the obvious one with sash clamps so um, I'll just take this one out actually I'm going to show you a bit about these wooden clamps in a bit as well so a sash clamp it's basically a bar that compresses to squeeze your wood but these are expensive so um, you know if you're just making one guitar to buy two or three sash clamps it's, it's probably more expensive than the actual wood so I recommend you buy your blanks ready to work on um, but Carol's got a little clip lined up if you Carol the um, top one body blank it's going to show you an um, alternative way to clamp the body and I'm just going to show you a little one minute clip there is a longer video it's just a clip from a longer video so um, if you want to see the full video you'll have to do a little search um, or sign up on the website and you'll see it there it's alternative ways to join the body blank um, I show two different ways but I'm just going to show you one today this is the sellotape method Believe it or not, you can use sellotape to join the body blank. So hopefully Carol will be able to get that lined up. Here it comes. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, you won't believe this, but I'm gonna use sellotape. It's actually quite amazing how much pressure you can put on with sellotape. It stretches and then it pulls back to apply clamping pressure so just demonstrate that maybe you can see it stretch there we go sound amazing. Well, I think we can see that's worked. Might put another one along the middle. That's it. Carl. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. That has to be the cheapest way to clamp two pieces of wood together and as you can see we've got glue squeeze out all the way along as long as we've done a good job on those two surfaces before we started then that will be perfect just to prove that that worked yeah that'll do put me back on so yeah uh, just to prove that that worked it did work <laughs> you'll have to watch the rest of the video to prove it blimey how many of me are there no, what's going on? Press pull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, I wish I could clone myself in real life. That'd be ace, wouldn't it? I could do three jobs at once. <laughs> so yes, clamping the body, you're going to need clamps for that. And sellotape is the cheapest way to do it, believe it or not. Um, so that's that done. So once you've got your body blank, then you're going to be um, routing. So, obviously, there's a video on that. Um, I did, it's in the Guitar Making Techniques playlist. Um, by the way, this is what I'm doing today is, is episode 10 of um, a whole playlist, which is, I'm trying to lay down the basic techniques and tools that you'll need um, to, to make guitars. Not just one guitar, but 10 or 100 guitars, okay? So, um, that's where we're coming from. If you want to know a bit more about the actual routing, then um, you'll have to watch that video. Um, or again, sign up on the course if you want the full deal. But as you've seen, I've carefully marked out the positions of these. 
and then we would need um, clamps to uh, to um, fix on our patterns. So a lot of guitar making. Here's a little bonus tip for those of you that don't know. A lot of guitar making is done with these patterns and a cutter something like this. So all we have to do is make a bit of space. I like to use the corner of a bench for this. Question? Yeah, well Rob, Robin Gosman's in the house and he said he used opposing wedges to clamp his under the caravan pine body blank. Yeah, you can use wedges as well. Um, we use wedges on thinner pieces like our acoustic soundboards um, and a joining board. I'll maybe show you that as well if there's time. Um, but on thicker pieces, we usually like a bit more pressure, but, um, but you don't need to. So with all these clamps, um, really, they're there just to hold. You're not trying to squash anything. We're not trying to crush or squash anything. So you don't need a massive amount of clamping pressure. So as long as it's holding there, um, then you're fine. Uh, Bag Press is talking about tesla tape. He, he uses tesla tape for some of his lamination jobs. Um, well, yeah, um, different guys who specialise in different things have got you know different things that suit their purposes better. And uh, yeah, I'm in a great position where you know I meet these guys. They come on my course like Darren, and he shows me things from his. Um, field of expertise and I get to I get to pinch some of them and some some from over here and some from over here that's what guitar makers do really we just pinch things from everywhere else so you will need I think you're going to need four metal clamps I'll tell you why because you need four to glue your fretboard on so I'm going to show you a little clip for that now if you're going to do um cap like this guitar here has got a cap on then you're going to need a lot more clamps so I'll just show you this first um, I think you only actually need four metal clamps to build a guitar okay um, I usually buy them in pairs so um, you'll find them in different sizes as well so you might want to buy two small two medium and two large or um, whatever or four medium which is perfectly adequate. Um, but you'll see I've got a, like a couple of smaller ones there. I buy them in pairs because you tend that's how you tend to use them or in fours even. Um, so there's other metal clamps you, you can buy. Here's ones with a bit longer reach. They're handy in certain situations, but you don't actually need them. I guess the long and the short of this, right, is the short version, which I should have done at the start and I forgot. The short version is you need four metal clamps and one slightly longer clamp. I would recommend um, one of these wooden thumb clamps. So the short version is four of them, one of them, that's all you need if you're following um, the course um, as laid out on, on the Guitar Making Academy. So you don't have to spend a fortune on clamps. You just need four metal ones and one slightly longer one. And I'd recommend for the longer one, the wooden ones. So I'm gonna show you what they're all doing um, before we finish. Hopefully it'll all be clear. So metal clamps, they come in different sets and sizes, but for a job like this routing job here, um, obviously um, what we're doing here is we're setting up for routing. Um, it needs to not move. If this moves while we're routing, then we'll end up with a guitar that's the wrong shape. So to copy this shape in, we would just clamp that on. And I like to use a corner so that I can put a clamp on each end. And you'll notice that I haven't got much space for clamping. This is why I normally do all the routing before I cut the body shape out. Okay, so... Um, just to explain to you guys, I don't normally cut the shape out until I've done all the routing because it gives me a bit more space for putting the clamps and for working on. But just for demo purposes. Well, for demo purposes, then I'll put an actual 
thing on there, that's what it would normally look like. And then you put a clamp on each side. Go on then, shout a question while I do this. Well, you know you said about uh, sticking, uh, clamping a vice to a table. You, you mentioned the word wife and... It... Yes. So, and um, Arthur... Is that, have I triggered them? Arthur Araujo is in Araujo, or Araujo, I don't have to say it. Uh, Arthur, Arthur's new, he's just joined the community at Guitar Making. Hey Arthur, cheers. Um, just cut to number one. But, cheers Arthur. Right. Um, we'll see you over there after the live stream. But he says, what do you do if you've stuck your body blank to the table? <laughs> you apologise. Um, I think it's a serious question though. Yeah, always remember it's, it's much easier to apologise than to ask for permission. <laughs> so that's, you did, first of all you got that right. Yeah, um, what do you do if you've stuck it to the table? Or a bench even, I mean it could be, what do you do if you've accidentally... Yeah. When you've glued your bloody blank, if you stuck it accidentally, <laughs> how would you get that off? I can't say it's ever happened to me, um, but what I would say is it's probably not stuck as strong as you think. So um, what you've got to do is get something in there and just prise it off. I would suggest you prise it off, but you're going to end up damaging either the the the, um, the table or the, the body blank, unfortunately. Um, it's too late now. Yeah, Robert. What you should have done... <laughs> Rock and roller says, yeah, I'm sure we all know what you, what you should have done. <laughs> so what, yeah, hindsight you... is a great thing, isn't it, Alpha? How would you avoid that then? Never Rob? mind. How you would avoid that is clean off all the excess glue with a damp cloth before you put it down. TV says, hit it sideways. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry you had that experience, but that's how you learn, isn't it? Right, I'm on camera four. Okay, so yeah. Um, so with that in place, then I could go ahead and route. Uh, I've put my cutter down with the with, with the cutter, you know the one that follows. So this is a top bearing, top bearing router cutter, and it follows the pattern. So a couple of good metal clamps for that. They need to be on fairly strong so that it's not going to move. But I just want to show you a little trick when I'm putting them on. Um, I always put it on gently to start with because then I can get a hammer or the back of a clamp or something and I can just tap it just gently into position until it's exactly where I want it. Obviously this would be marked out and I'd be lining it up to a pencil line but um, you can tap it into position and then tighten the clamps up. So whenever I'm putting the clamps on um, so you always knock it when you're putting the clamps on. So I would always just put them on loosely, tap it into place, and then nip them up, and then you're ready to go. So that is how we attach our patterns. And if the pattern is too small, or there isn't enough space, then you could use the double-sided tape again. Obviously, you could use double-sided tape to fix those on for that. So um, I think the next clip, Carol, is it gluing the cap on? So I mentioned um, what we do sometimes is we glue a thin piece of wood on the top and that can be a really fancy, expensive oh, piece. Um, and so um, I wanted to point out, obviously you can do that, but then um, you're going to need a lot more clamps. So you only need four clamps to build a guitar, I think. Four or five. Four medium ones and one longer one. Um, but if you're going to customise your guitar and do other things, then you may need more clamps. You might have to think it through and think, oh, I'm going to need more clamps for that. For instance, gluing a cap on. So there's a little slideshow. It's only um, one minute long. Don't go away. We'll, uh, we'll play this and then... So this is a guitar um, that I made for a guy and it had an F hole in it. So what we did was we, on the body blank, as you'll see, um, I, I've hollowed out the body blank. So that's just the cap and I've cut the F hole into the cap. It's all carefully marked out. There's the cavity in the body and then we stick the cap on top. So that's about how much glue we put on. And that's what I really wanted to show you. 
and look how many clamps there are there. I would say you probably need about um, 10 or 12 clamps if you're going to be um, doing a guitar with a cap. Okay, so bear that in mind. That's what it looked like afterwards. And then we can just carry on like normal, finish the guitar as normal. Brilliant. That's it, Carol. Oops, we both did it. Yeah. Can you press pull? Or will I have to do it? I'll do it. So, yeah, a cap obviously adds expense because you've got to buy an extra piece of wood, but then you've got to buy all those clamps as well. Um, now, that is something that you could use the bag press for. So, uh, that's definitely something to consider if you're weighing up the options um, of whether it's worth actually spending the money on a bag press. What's the bag press? Yeah, the bag press is what I was mentioning earlier, the vacuum pump. And it's um, a bag that you put things in, sucks it all down. Really good for um, gluing unusual shaped objects like guitars. So yeah, if you're interested in the bag press stuff, I'm not gonna go on about it again and again, Carol, but um, uh, see Darren, he's in the chat. Go and see bagpress.com, he's in the chat. We're not affiliated in any way, not yet anyway. But I think Darren's gonna be making a lot of our patterns and stuff. Uh, yeah. Darren's all rigged up with CNC, so he's helping us uh, making our patterns. Um, for sale on th on the shop, which you'll see very soon, hopefully. So another type of metal clamp, cheaper ones. Um, there's there's hundreds of different types of clamps. I cannot possibly show you them all because there's so many different types. But um, it doesn't matter at the end of the day as long as you've got four decent clamps and one with a longer reach. I'll show you what that one's for in a bit. Um, then that's all you need to build a guitar. Here's a couple more. These are handy because they're quick. Quick clamps. Is that what they're called? Yeah. I don't know what they're called. But they're quick. Um, so that's handy. Simon's channel says Lidl's are doing F clamps at the moment. Yeah, well, obviously you get what you pay for when it comes to clamps. But, um, but uh, yeah, one thing I was definitely going to say, and that's, cheers for reminding me, is that, uh, yeah, everyone head to Lidl's now and buy all the clamps. Um, you can never have too many clamps <laughs> and buy them when they're on special offer. That's my best tip. Should have done all that at the start. For the, for the people you, who can't be that, asked to hang around. Do you remember that really cheap shop we went to in um, Coventry and you bought all the clamps and the woman at the, the checkout was like... Yeah, well, if they're discounted, sometimes I'll, I'll and, just buy all the clamps. That. you said that to her. You said... You can never have too many clamps. She looked like... Buy them when they're on special she offer. She looked like you'd come from another universe. <laughs> well, she obviously <clears throat> did not appreciate the glory of clamps. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you as well. I was going to show you how to impress all the ladies. Oh, stop all this nonsense. What, what if you're a lady watching? Right, and if you're a lady, this is how you impress... This will impress all the blokes in your life. Watch this. This is how I impress the ladies anyway. Um, it's never worked, by the way. But if it ever does, I'll let you know. Tighty. Lucy. <laughs> right, keep that secret, folks. We don't want that to be common knowledge, otherwise they'll all be doing it. And I want to show you one more thing about these clamps, is when you put them on, let's put one on, on this as if it's, uh, as if we're putting it on right. When you're putting it on, everybody does this. So they grab their clamp, put it on their piece of wood, um, and they hold it like this. Well, the thing is, as you tighten it up, it's not straight and it tends to move. So if you're clamping a fretboard on, for instance, um, and, it, and you're not holding it straight, it can make your fretboard slide. 
So, I mean, we've got ways of avoiding that. We pin it, um, which is one of the things. I'm going to show you um, a little film about the pins as well in a minute. Is that the next one, Carol? Glue, 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 glue the fretboard next, right? So I'm going to show you. But I want you to notice when I put the clamps on, um, I don't just put them on. I hold them and press them flat against the back of the neck first. Let me show you. Press the ladies. Well, they're saying, can you do two at once? That's what they're saying. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> so what I do is I hold it flat against the back of the neck. So I can let go with the other hand. And then this, this part of the clamp, if I can show you. Oh, this part of the clamp is pressed against the, the wood and held flat. And then you can just wind it down at the front and it's going down flat, you see. That way you get, your clamp goes on straight. Anyway, I think I might mention that in the film that's coming up. So uh, um, if Carol, if you've got that film ready, that'd be brilliant if you could get that lined up. Glue the fretboard. So I reckon you can do this with four clamps, but um, it's better if you use five or six. Go on then. Okay, so now we've got these pins. There's nothing special about them. They're just ordinary nails. You might have to do some tests, drill a hole, tap the pin in until you get pins that are the right size for the hole. I'm now going to tap the pin through just until it catches into the table. I don't want to hit it too far in. Okay. So you can see where those pins are just coming through now. So the next thing is to dry clamp the neck. We don't whack the glue on and hope for the best. We're going to dry clamp first. So align the fretboard into position. We line it up with the takeoff side of the nut. And I'm using my fingers here to make sure that that's even. If there is any steps, it's the same on both side, sides and then the same down this end. So my fretboard's on nice and straight, and then I press the nails in, give them an extra little tap. You need to support the neck underneath with something while you tap this nail. Okay. The next thing is to put the coil on. It should fit just over those holes nicely. And then we're gonna put the clamps on. So I'm dry clamping so that I haven't got to go running around for clamps while the glue's drying. And then all my clamps are there ready to go. I like to use um, something like this kind of clamp to start with because it pushes straight. Your average clamp, like this kind of thing, when you tighten it up, it tends to, it tends to want to twist the fretboard. So I like to use a clamp that pushes nice and straight to start with, and then I'll put these on. When you put these clamps on, if you put your fingers underneath and push it up flat onto the neck like this, hold it like that, you'll find it goes on a lot straighter. Then there's an opportunity to check make sure there's no gaps. This looks fantastic, as it should be. We'll check it on both sides just to make sure. Yep, yep looks great. So now this fretboard is ready for gluing. All we have to do is undo the clamps one turn etc so yeah gluing's obviously just the same as clamping we always dry clamp it's one of the things i wanted to mention as well whenever you're doing any gluing operation um obviously as clamping and holding i wanted to mention that we also dry clamp everything before we splash glue about um so <clears throat> um i think i've pretty much mentioned everything that i wanted to say 
Um, apart from, um, I didn't mention calls. So what you saw when I was putting the fretboard on there was the fretboard call. It's just a shaped piece of wood used for gluing. Um, and it's called a call, that's C-A-U-L. Um, so there's one made from acrylic. Here's another one. I say shaped, it's, this one's it's just got two strips of wood glued on to take up the radius when we're gluing the fretboard on. So that's called a call. And when you're clamping and, and holding, depending on what job you're doing, you may need various calls. For instance, here's one for gluing the, um, the bridge on an acoustic guitar. You'll see that in a bit when I'm, uh, I think it's in the slideshow. I'm going to show you a full acoustic build um, and point out all the clamps as we go. But for an electric guitar, I think we've pretty much covered it. Um, you would be obviously gluing your body blank together, doing all your routing, gluing your fretboard on. Um, there's, there are these cheap plastic clips that I use for um, uh, clamping, things like clamping the fillet in and when you don't need a lot of pressure. These are actually pretty useful, um, but again, non-essential. You don't need these. Um, but you'll see later on on the acoustic build, we use quite a lot of these, um, quite a lot of the smaller ones for gluing the curved lining on. So you'd need to get yourself a box. Now I have got a video on essential tools for guitar making, where I go through all the tools that you need for this. And then there's an extra tools for making acoustic guitars, where I show you the extra tools that you need for building acoustic guitars, etc. So yeah, you've got clamps and you've also got calls. So I just wanted to point that out. You can never have too many clamps. So if you see them on special offer, just buy them. Um, oh, wooden clamps. Rock and Roller has asked, can you show those again? Yeah, so the wooden clamps, these are what we call cam clamps. Um, there is on the site, um, there's free, what do you call them, open source plans for making something similar to this on the website. Um, they're not my plans, we found them from somewhere. Somebody found them, put them on the site. Um, but I make my own, not these ones. I, I buy these when they're cheap and then make my own when they're not cheap. Um, but if you're making an acoustic guitar, then I recommend, I think it's six of these. So two small ones, two medium and two long. Um, again, for more details, watch the extra tools for making acoustic guitars. Um, but they're fairly, they're fairly simple um, in operation, but actually quite tricky to make. So um, they're also expensive as well. So um, uh, I would say, a full set of these is 12 and a half set is six. Um, I would say you probably need six of these. They're so, they're so handy as well. You can use them for lots of other things. Let so me just show you. So Simon's channel's asking, what wood did you make them out of? What wood well, I made mine from maple. But I'm gonna show you a, a neat little trick with these you can do. I mean, this is one of the most awkward shapes we have to deal with, something like this. Well, you could put it in a vise, but I'm gonna show you another way. You can clamp it with a wooden clamp like this and then clamp the vise down to the bench. Uh, sorry, clamp the clamp. So I'm sure you can, if you think about it, you can come up with all sorts of ways for holding things. We're going to do the same at the other end. So that's one way you could hold a really awkward piece if you didn't have a vice, for instance. I don't know why you would want to hold it like that, but you might want to hold it like that. Um, maybe, I don't know, doing some inlay work on a neck or something. It might be handy. But uh, it's actually, it's quite firm. So I've used four clamps to make a little gadget there. It's clever, isn't it? 
So these clamps are super handy and also they're super fast as well. See how fast they are to disassemble them. Uh, I'd recommend that you get six of these, two small, two medium and two large. And that's all you need to build an acoustic guitar, as you'll see coming up in the, in the little film. Um, so we're going to do that, I think. Um, glue the neck. Oh, glue the neck on an electric guitar and then we're going to move on to acoustics. So yeah, those, those wooden clamps, um, mainly used for, um, for making acoustics, but you can also use them for, for making um, electrics. Sometimes use them for gluing the neck, which I'm about to show you now. But you can just use the same metal clamps that you've bought earlier, where I said you only needed four metal clamps. So if, if you're ready to play that little film, Carol. We're not going to over tighten this clamp because we don't want to damage the frets. Just nip it up. We don't want to crush the wood anyway. Just nip them up. Check that it's gone all the way in. Should have glue squeezing out all the way along. There it comes. Okay, so we need to clean off that. I'm going to use an old toothbrush. I won't tell you where I got it from. We all know. We all know, don't we? <laughs> oh. Yep. Where'd you get the toothbrush from, Carol? You Will you stop cloning yourself. me? Get rid of yourself, I can't. Oh, I've got to push it, sorry. So I think we've pretty much covered all for uh, electric guitars, I think. So let's move on now to acoustics. Um, I'm going to do acoustics in a different way. We're going to play a slideshow and I'm just going to talk you through it. So it should be a bit quicker. Before I do though, also forgot to mention neck rest. I use a bean bag. It's just a, an old pair of jeans a leg from the old pair of jeans, sewed up, full of beans, not baked beans. Um, don't use baked beans, they won't work. These are actually pigeon peas, whatever they are. You can use ball bearings, um, but something like that is the best thing for a neck rest. Or you can buy something like this. Got mine from Stumac, but you can make or buy something like that. They're actually quite difficult to make, um, so I just buy them. Or I use my, my old favorite, neck rest. So a neck rest is handy. Um, let's do the string tension simulator. Can we have a drum roll please? Are we going to not watch the film? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh I was jumping ahead of myself. It's because you said it was two o'clock. I had it all planned out and we've gone over again. Right, bag press said is that where all my lentils went? How do you mean? In the, in the bean bag. Oh yeah. Right, so we... Tools. Are you ready? Yeah, play the film, Carol. So this is an acoustic guitar that I made for a guy and it's in, the whole slideshow is the whole build of the guitar. So it's not all entirely relevant, but it's, it's only like five, six minutes. So um, bear with it. It's quite interesting to show you the different clamps and there's a few surprises along the way. So let's see what happens. Um, as you saw, I'm making a, a wooden rosette for it. If you want to know more about how we make a guitar, you'll have to sign up on the course. But basically I'm already using the wooden clamps there for holding stuff, just for doing the braces. And um, you can use those wooden clamps for clamping the braces if we just pause it there a minute so what you're seeing there is a go bar deck um that is it's kind of like a an advanced guitar maker's clamp so i wanted to show you that it's a way of gluing the braces on um 
but it's really expensive because you need a curved mould. What it's being pressed down into is what we call a radius dish. So you'll need one of those radius dishes. These, um, these dishes and, and you also need to build the, the go bar deck around it. So um, obviously it's a more, more advanced technique and not for the beginner. Um, if we just um, come back to me in the room, Carol, go back to the normal camera and I'll show you. Uh, so this is a, how we would do it normally. So this is a, um, a back that I'm making. Actually, this is a back that I'm making for myself. Um, you need a slat to protect your wood. And that goes underneath. That's to protect the face side. So this is how we do the braces on um, acoustics on the front and the back is we glue them with these uh, wooden clamps like this. So if you just do one brace at a time, then your six wooden clamps is plenty. But if you've got more than six, then you can glue them all at once. Um, and you can also use the, the plastic clips on the ends like this. Uh, so that helps. And then obviously you would put them on this side as well. So um, slats and wooden clamps if you haven't got the go bar deck. Question, how do you fix a body if you want to use C? If you want to use chisels. So if you need more information for that. Can Elect you pull, pull that off, Carol, please? Sol solid body. You need to make sure that I can read the question before we put it up. What was the question? Uh, for an electric, if he wants to use solid uh, chisels on, a, on an electric solid body, how do you fix the body? How do you clamp it, I guess? What's the... Well, I would probably use two of these wooden clamps. I'll show you. So are we happy with that? How we would clamp slats, braces? Um, let me just show you clamping a body for, uh, for carbon. Now, actually, I did... Uh, I did a whole s s live stream on carving. Um, I did a whole stream on carving where I showed you different positions for clamping. So it might be better if you just go and watch that. That's what I'd suggest. It's in the, um, the guitar making tools and techniques playlist, carving. And I actually carve this with a chisel. I'll show you how we carve that and you'll see how I clamp it. There's different positions for clamping it, so it's probably better if you watch that video. Um, obviously what I'm doing is I'm trying to show you the basic stuff and then you can, you can take it to as advanced level as you want after that. So um, where are we now? Uh, we're, we're playing the film. Put the film back on please, Carol. Is it going to go back to the beginning? It should go back to where it was. Okay. So there's the go bar deck. Um, so here's me marking out for the rosette. Um, no clamps necessary for that. Nice wooden rosette there, that's made from walnut, if you're wondering. Um, and then, thanks Paul. And then you can see me clamping on all the various wooden parts. So we glue the flat braces first and they're just clamped down to a flat board. Now you can see me using a lot of clamps but you don't need that many. You can just glue them one at a time if that's all you've got. So we do the flat braces first then we carve them um, and then we glue on the curved braces. So there's me carving with the curved chisel. Curved chisels are available on the guitar making website by the way. Special guitar making chisels excellent for reaching over the braces. So there's all my curved braces ready to glue on. Um, looks like I was um, bending my sides. And there's, if we just pause it there. So that is, that's those little spring clips I was telling you about. So to glue on the curved lining on the sides, you need about 25, 20, I guess you could get away with. Um, 
I've got 50 so I can do two sides at once. And they, they go as close together as, as you can get them. Um, some people use wooden pegs for that, but I find that they're just not strong enough. And I find these clips are the best thing for that. So if you're making an acoustic guitar, you do need um, quite a few more clamps. But hopefully, as you can see, they're not ridiculously expensive. They're not expensive at all, those ones. And this is my curved braces going on. So we glue the cursed braces on and then carve those. So as you can see, um, the building of acoustic guitar, it's all done stage by stage. Um, whenever you're doing anything like this, it's all about what order you do it. Um, you need to know what order to do the jobs um, and you need to know how to do it and you need to know when to stop. And so that's where I come in. Here you can see the wooden clamps again being used to glue on the tail block and the heel block. And then the wooden sides are glued on with the wooden clamps. And then more curved lining. Again, the sides can be glued on one at a time. So you can use six on one side and then move them and use the six on the other. And there's um, how I clamp the sides for carving, just with the wooden clamps. Now that there, what you can see is a workboard shoe. So that's just a, a lump of maple with a hole drilled in it. And I'm using a wing nut there just to clamp it down to my workboard. Um, it helps to stop it moving around. Um, cheers, Paul. And that's interesting as well. So gluing the back on, we call this rope in the back. And I like to use rubber for this. So that there is a truck inner tube that's been cut into a two inch strip into a, in a spiral. And you end up with a great big long piece of rubber that can be used as a huge long elastic strip to, um, to clamp the back down. So um, some people use spool clamps for that and you can use the go bar deck for that as well. But my preferred method is the, um, the inner tube method. Um, if you can't find inner tube, by the way, um, there is a product on the market. This guy actually contacted me, um, Mr. Mr. Adventure Tape. So there's a product called Adventure Tape, which is kind of like um, a modern version of this, which uh, is, again is uh, super stretchy and strong. Um, and people are using this for gluing their backs on and their binding as well. But um, for me, I find it's a bit short and you need two pieces. But if you can't find car inner tube, then Adventure Tape is certainly something that you could use. Um, oh. But you'd need to buy two lengths. Right, the, the inner tube thing, what we found is that it's the, it's the older rubber. That yes, that's true. You need to find an old inner tube rather than the newer ones. Because the newer ones just aren't as stretchy. Um, again, if you can't find one, then, um, well, contact us. I've got loads of the stuff, so get on the forum and say, Mac, I need some inner tube. Because thankfully, um, one of our students um, has donated a lot for us. So cheers for that, Theron. I've got a box full. And uh, if you're stuck for, for this, then I can certainly help you out. Get on the, thorn, um, on the forum and ask. Right, so here I'm obviously starting work on the neck. Um, matching binding. There I'm using masking tape again as a clamp. I'm holding the binding together with masking tape. So that counts, doesn't it? And there's, um, you can't really see, but I'm using wooden clamps to clamp that. Um, and my, uh, my binding iron is clamped as well. There's masking tape being used to temporarily fix the binding. And then actual sellotape being used to, to glue it, to hold it on while the glue dries. So this there is my dovetail jig. I'll, I'll give you a quick look at this in a minute as well, because there's a couple of little toggle clamps on there I'd like to show you. Um, if you're building a permanent jig that you always want to have a clamp attached to, then you can, uh, you can build a clamp into it. I'll show you that in a minute. So there you saw me using the vise. Um, and there's six clamps holding the fretboard on. So if you follow my advice, you'll have the four metal clamps and the six wooden clamps if you're building an acoustic and that's all you'll need. I'm using the quick clamps on the headstock there, but any clamps would do. Um, notice that those ones are soft faced. Um, 
if they were metal clamps, I would put a piece of wood there to protect the surface. So that's one thing to watch for. Um, if you're using metal clamps, you might want to protect the surface. So um, this is all pretty irrelevant, but I thought you might want to see it anyway. There's metal clamps gluing the, um, the headstock veneer on. And I'm laying out some fancy inlays. Uh, I'd forgotten about that, so it's nice to see it. Um, I think that's a family crest or something. No, it's a... What is it's it? It's a luck and booth. It's a symbol of love, the joining of two... The luck and booth. Yeah, two people. It's there. It's a it's thing. Their, it was there. So inlays, obviously we make the same size hole as the inlay and we glue it in. No clamp necessary for that, just gravity. Not just to show you how thin the veneer is. So you have to be careful when you're sanding, you don't sand through. There it is, all sanded up and finished. Um, and gluing the neck. So I've used three clamps there to glue the neck. If you just pause it, could you just take it back one picture, Carol? Well, can you pause it then? Take it back to. But well, it doesn't matter. Keep going back, keep going back. There. Yeah, one more. So the plastic clip on there is really, it's just to hold the fretboard coil. Um, and the fretboard coil is just to spread the weight of the other two clamps. So one clamp goes in from the soundboard, one goes out from the outside. I've used a wooden one and a metal one. Um, but again, any clamps that will fit will do. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you how I did it. There's the clamp going on from the inside and there's, there's a call on the inside, a shaped block which goes over the, the bracing so that we can clamp it on. And yeah, there's the, um, the, the bridge call. Again, on the inside of the guitar, there's another call made from wood, which is shaped to fit over the um, bracing so that we can just put a wooden clamp on there. There's a close up of the perfect glue line of the bridge there. That's what we aim for. So on this particular guitar, that was pretty much it. I'm using my neck rest during assembly. So the neck rest gets used quite a lot. Um, and in this particular case, I didn't use the string tension simulator, it would appear. So hang about and I'll show you um, all about that. Um, the slideshow just, just finishes with a few nice images of the finished guitar. Um, but there you saw every job, you saw every clamp that I used along the way to build an acoustic guitar. So if you think that, um, you know, you need hundreds of stuff to build an acoustic guitar, you do need quite a few things. You need a few things more than if you're building um, an electric for sure. But it's not going to break the bank. Six wooden clamps, four metal ones and a load of plastic ones. <clears throat> so string tension simulator coming up, um, it's finished Carol, if you could just pull me off. So the string tension simulator is a, a gadget that's uh, invented by Stumac. Um, this is the old one. Of course, five minutes after I bought one, they improved it. Mine's made from wood and the new one is all made from aluminium. So the wooden one, it does have issues or it has the main issue it has is wood flexes. And so these incredibly accurate dials for engineering purposes um, the the wood bends too much to depend upon these dials so um, I've got a way around that I'm going to show you um, but if you buy the new version then you won't have that issue because the new one's made from aluminium and doesn't flex like this one does So let me set this one up for you. Maybe if I turn it around, it'll be better. 
So it's got basically it's got feet that the guitar sits onto, and then it's got these adjustable up and downy bits. adjustable up and downy bits. So these are to, to hold the neck. Um, so like I say, this is called a string tension simulator. And the idea is so that you can work on the neck as if the strings are on. So if I grab um, my guitar, I've lost it, went the wrong way. So here's my guitar. Um, it needs to be in tune, so so normally I would get my tuner out. Oh, there's one on the end. Battery's gone. Um, close enough for jazz. Carl doesn't like it. She never mentions the word addiction. <laughs> In certain company. Anyway. Can't take that back. <laughs> so I'll put my guitar on the it's got these extra um, slats um, just so that you don't squash the back end of your acoustic guitar. Um, this works for electrics and acoustics, but if you're putting acoustics on, you need uh, the slats to spread the weight so that these feet don't go through the back of your guitar. And these feet move to different positions depending on the shape of your guitar. You unscrew them and screw them back in in different holes. But I just leave, I've actually got two of these jigs and I use one set up for electrics and one for acoustics. So I haven't got to keep adjusting it all the time. So we make sure everything's clear and we adjust these legs to make sure that we've got a bit of play on these. So these are touching the back of the neck there, you can see that. And so if I move the neck, you can see they're within range. So we can adjust these feet here until um, until the neck is sitting in the right place. So check it's not rocking. Everything's sitting in the right place. It's fairly solid. And we've got some slack on the things. Make sure these aren't touching yet. And so what I'm going to do is strap my guitar on there like that. So I need to find my straps. Straps, straps, straps. No sign of any straps. So who was saying in the comments, isn't it amazing how Mark can always find everything. Was that you, DJ? Is DJ there? No, he's had to go shopping. No, I think it was Peter. Well... Did you ever ask, for, ask you to run a session on... Well, it was going so well. I need to find these straps, Carol. Right, get back on yeah, the yellow ones. One will do if you can't find two. You'll never find them though. What am I going to talk about? I've got nothing to talk about without my straps. Um, Lewis, where's my straps? 
Lewis is hitting them. Well, I, was, I did sort out quite a lot of things. No, that's not the right one. Oh no. Dead air. Carol to the rescue, as usual. Two would be good, one will do. So these are, um, these are just, uh, I've just remembered I've got a whole box full over there. Never mind. Um, luggage straps. So that's how the guitar is strapped to the, um, to the thing. The guitar's in tune, remember? I'm just going to lift it so that I can get um, the thing underneath, the strap underneath, and then feed it through. Well, what do you want me to do? Bill Flew said you should have done your, you should have done your clamps with Lynn in the dead space. I should have, shouldn't I? Yeah. So. Obviously, you, you get used to using these. Um, these clamps, they're a bit awkward, but you'll get used to it. Let's just put it on not too tight. And uh, this is my old guitar, so I'm not worried about it, but you would put protection here to protect um, if you're working on somebody else's guitar. You certainly need some kind of protection. Okay, how tight does it need to be? You can actually ping the straps there. Hear that? So it needs to be tight, it needs to be firm enough to hold the guitar, stop it from moving, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna smash the guitar to pieces. So tighten it up until you hear it crack. That's a guitar maker's joke. Not over tight. That's pretty tight, but as you can see, it's fine. Um, well, we'll put another one on. Two's better than one. Like I say, you would normally protect these edges here, but this is my old workshop guitar, so I'm not fussy about it. I just want to show you quickly how this thing works. And I'll show you how to get around the slight flexibility of the wooden parts. Okay, so the guitar is strapped to the jig. The guitar is in tune. We'll pretend it's in tune. Um, and the truss rod needs to be set. So at this point, this is where we would um, adjust the truss rod. So um, mine's already set. And I've got a toothed straight edge here, which is handy for um, checking the straightness when the strings are on. So uh, a notched straight edge is good for checking the straight edge when the strings are on. You don't need it obviously. So what I'm looking for is just a slight bit of relief in the middle. The ruler's touching at both ends and there's a tiny gap in the middle. Um, that act, the actual amount of gap depends on your style of playing and the gauge of strings and that kind of thing. Perfectly straight is acceptable. You don't want too much of a gap. So I would say if you um, use the, the thickness of your thinnest string is your maximum relief in the middle. If you know what I'm talking about, maybe that'll help you. But you can, your neck can be perfectly straight or very slightly forward bowed with a slight gap in the middle there. So um, we adjust our truss rod. Now this today is not about how to adjust the truss rod. So I'm not going to get into all that. We're just going to assume that it's set correctly. Um, and I'm telling you that it is set correctly with just a very tiny bit of relief. The neck is almost straight, very tiny bit of relief. That's how it needs to be. 
So what we can do now is lock the neck in position. I'm going to move these dials to zero. You can see I can turn that to zero. These can be moved to zero, you see. So that's registering on the neck. If I push down, you can see it moving. I'm setting it to zero and then this end as well. See that? The neck's not actually on quite straight. Just going to adjust the neck a bit. Okay, zero and zero. So theoretically, if I take the strings off now and then I bend the neck back until they say zero, it should be exactly as it was before. So that's the, the theory. We're now going to use two clamps to bring the neck down, uh, to bend the neck to exactly where it was with the strings are on. So first of all, we just put these clamps in place just to sort of, they're not under any tension. You can see that's moved already, look. Actually loose, tighten that up. Um, so let's get this bit out of the way. I don't trust these dials because there's enough flexibility in the wood for it to affect the dials. Like I was saying, they now make this jig from metal and it doesn't flex, but the old one did. You can actually see it if I, if I pick it up and move it, you can see that moving. So um, instead of relying on these dials, what I do is I, I've got a, a gauge that goes on the top to get the straightness of the top. So I take it from the top. So take a measurement. And then what we do is we take the strings off and then we use these two clamps, this one, and then there's a pull down here to simulate the string tension until the dials read the same as they did when the strings are on. So hopefully that made uh, some kind of sense. Um, I'll just demonstrate that. So I've put this clamp in, it's just in loose there, just to catch the neck when I take the strings off. The, everything's set to zero. I'm gonna bring these up to touch the neck as well. And then we can take the strings off. So the neck won't move very much, it will move a little bit, but it's already cowed in place by some of these other things. Let's um, get these strings out of the way. You can see this dial's moved. So we're nearly there, five minutes and we'll be done. Um, Get these strings out of the way. Need a new set of strings anyway. Okay. And so now we have this jack here and this clamp to adjust it back to where it was before. So if I, if I put this one on, so if you think about it, when the strings are on, they pull in up here and pushing down there. So they pull up here and they push down there like this. So that's what the string tension is going to do. String tension simulator is going to pull down on the nut and push up on the back of the headstock and we'll be able to recreate that shape as if the strings are on. Now it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Most guitars don't need to go to this extent, to be honest. This is really above and beyond. Um, it's like a super duper jig really for clamping and holding. But I just wanted to show you you know, what's out there, what you can get to make your life easier. It certainly does that. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. So now um, there's actually a, 
a nut underneath here that I can pull tighten up. I don't know if you can see that. I can tighten this nut here and it's going to pull down just here on the and then I adjust this one. Can you see the dial there going to zero? Zero. So if I adjust this one until that says zero, then I adjust this one here until that one says zero. And it takes, um, a couple of goes, you have to dial it in. See, it's gone over now, but you can dial that into, oops, go the wrong way. Let's go the right way. You can dial that in until it says zero. Okay. But to be honest, like I was saying, I think there's too much flexibility in this jig. And so what I do is I go from the top. So I, what I do is I adjust it until it reads the same as what it did before uh, from the top. Um, there. So there's about 10 thousandths of an inch of relief in this neck. So now I can work on this neck as if the strings are on. These are solid, so it supports it. And that is um, probably one of the most accurate ways that you can uh, hold your guitar in order to do a fret dress. So that's the string tension simulator. Um, so we can go ahead and work on that now. And sometimes, like I say, I'll use this jig um, without all the um, string tension part of it. I just use it for actually holding um, an acoustic guitar while I'm working on it because it's such an awkward shape. It's really handy. So there you go, string tension simulator. Um, I hope um, you found that interesting and enjoyable. Um, do we have any questions on that? Got any questions at all that you want to ask before you just do the last thing? You've answered some of the questions that came up, you answered as you went, obviously. Brilliant. Very thorough. Okay, well, I do try and be thorough, but it is live and um, I usually forget something. I always forget something, to be honest. I mean, guitar making is such a big field. I'm always learning something new. And so I can't possibly tell you everything I know about each subject, you know, in, in, in an hour. So I, I really do my best. Um, and so I hope you appreciate that. And uh, I certainly appreciate you guys watching, especially if you've stayed right till the end. Um, awesome. Thank you very much. It must be half past three in the morning in yeah. Hawaii. Blimey. If you're in Hawaii, it might be time for bed. <laughs> Depends which end of the day are you at. Is it the end of the day or the start of the day? That's the, that's the question. So yes, thank you very much guys. Um, especially if you've stayed right till the end. I did think that, um, you know, clamping and holding, it doesn't sound the most sexy thing in the world, does it? But we got through it, didn't we? And we all learned how to impress the ladies. Can he do two at once? Um, of course he can. Super clamps asks, do you, do you use spindle clamps for acoustic tops and backs? Spindle clamps? I'm not sure what you mean by a spindle clamp. Oh, you mean, um, you mean those kind of, yeah, spindle clamps is up. It's like a round thing and a round thing with a threaded rod in between. So the answer is no, I don't use that. Um, you saw how I wrote the backs. Um, and actually, you also saw, if you go back through the slideshow, how I glue the sides onto the front as well. And um, no, I don't like those spool clamps, to be honest. I think you're talking about spool clamps, which are two circular bits of wood with a threaded rod in between. Um, yeah, I find they're really fiddly. Lots of those is a bit fiddly for me. Um, I prefer my long strip of rubber. Um, and we don't need anything like that when we're gluing the... Uh, the sides on. Having said all that, that's just how I do it. And um, 
what I always advise to people is to learn from as many different people as you can. Don't just take my word for it. Um, you know, go out there, buy all the books. That's what I did. Um, buy all the books, learn as much as you can from as many different people as you can. And then, you know, I'm sure there'll be one, up, one time, one day where I'll come to do the job and the spool clamps will be the only thing that do that particular job. You know, sometimes it happens and um, I might find myself using a technique that I've heard of but never needed to use until now. And then, oh, oh I can use that spool clamp technique. Maybe if I was just gluing like a, a loose front and it just had one piece, then maybe I'd use a spool clamp. Um, to be honest, I just use my wooden cam clamps for that kind of thing. But I guess what I'm trying to say is you use what you've got and you can make your own spool clamps. Um, and why not? But you don't need to. Um, so hopefully that's... Uh, we've one got last question. One last question. Right, so uh, Grey Hart over in Virginia uh, says, what book is your favourite? What book? Okay, so let me just see if I can see it. Tony, Tony TV 101's made a suggestion. Yeah. Tips for wives. For guitar makers' wives. We won't go down that road though, Tony. You're still at the headmaster's office. Yeah, we've got a book about that. But this is the book that, uh, that I learned from. It's called Guitar Making, Tradition and Technology by Compiano and Natelson. Sorry if I've butchered your names. Compiano and Natelson. <laughs> but it's a great book. The only thing is it's really difficult to follow. And if you ever want to find anything in it, it's an absolute nightmare <laughs> finding anything. Everything you need to know is in it. But, um, so what I've done is I've, um, I have used quite a lot of my own techniques. I, what I'd like to do is learn from as many places as possible, as I say. And then, then you, then you teach it to yourself. So I always say, nobody can teach you anything. You have to see something and then you have to teach it to yourself. That's how I learn. Nobody can, I can't magically imbue you with the ability to build guitars, but I can show you the stuff and then it's up to you to teach it to yourself. So that's how it works. And I would say, learn from as many different people as you can. Don't just take my word for it. But, um, but books aren't for everybody. Um, I, I can learn from a book, but even this one I found really difficult um, because there's a, it's he very text heavy. Um, what I prefer personally is to watch a video. And so that's what the Guitar Making Academy is all about. Um, what I've done is I've taken what seems like a very long and complicated procedure, and broken it down into lots of tent, or 20 minute jobs that I believe anybody can do it. So yeah, if you're not sure, head over, check out, there's loads of previews on there you can check out to see if it's the sort of thing you'd like. Um, and if it is, sign up on the premium membership and get access to all the courses, past, future, past, future and present. <laughs> and there's loads of new stuff coming. Okay, so just glad to say that James Perry has said, are you gonna write uh, how to build, he said how to build an arctic, but then he changed it to how to build an arch top <clears throat> uh, for him and Bill. And uh, of course, I'm saying 335, um, so and 335 plus one, whatever. The... So here we go. Um, so, yes, all that stuff is going to happen. Um, sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but these things take time. I hope you will appreciate how much work goes into doing this. Um, it looks like I'm just an idiot standing in front of a camera, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so I'm just an idiot standing in front of a camera. But it still takes quite a lot of setting up and getting everything together. Um, and so I do hope you appreciate that. And especially with the edited stuff, um, the acoustic course took me two years to build, by the way. So that was two years of work where I basically wasn't getting paid for it. Um, but I knew that if you build it, they will come. So yeah, get over there now, sign up. 
Um, it's, it's you guys that are keeping us going, so appreciate it. Thank you so much for all you guys, and especially if you've watched right till the end. Carol, what are you trying to tell me? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. She, Thumbs she just signs right. at me and she... I do the same one every she week. She thinks I'm supposed to know what it means. I do the same one every week. It's a thumb. So, yeah, like, subscribe and do all that kind of YouTube stuff. Oh, thank you. Peter we appreciate sent, it. Peter sent you a little tip. Thank and, you very much. Yeah, we appreciate the super chats. Um, it does help to keep us going, so we appreciate Peter that. Saying, keep it up. Thank you very much. See you in September. So, we'll see you. We're here every um, Wednesday and Saturday, by the way, so... This was episode 10 of Tools and Tech. Um, I think next week we're going to be doing um, soldering or fretting. So soldering is going to be a good one, as is fretting. Um, and we're really building up for what is going to be the ultimate, which is going to be the finishing course. So you will need to be signed up on the website for that one. Um, but we're going to be doing a, how to finish a guitar. And that's a, that's a biggie. Yeah, I think finishing a guitar is as big a job as building a guitar. So um, bear that in mind. So be gentle with me. Go and watch all the other videos. Like them all. Um, but the best thing you can do is go become a premium member or a supporter. Or just watch lots of our videos. Keep watching. Open up five or six tabs <laughs> with a video running on each one. Watch time is what we need. So that helps us as well. Boost us up the algorithm. So, um, yes, thanks to everybody who's watched till the end. I'm going to go and have a Thank lie down. You. And I might go and play with my bag press. <laughs> if you want to know more about the bag press, the last little, uh, last little point on the bag press is... He's getting a is, new website. Is, uh, yeah, he's getting a new website. Go and have a look at his website YouTube before channel. it changes. Definitely. This is my little one, but it does different sizes. Um, this one's ideal for guitar makers and if you've got any questions on bag press then Darren's, Darren's there for, to answer your questions um, and like I say there's a whole um, masterclass on using the bag press which is free to view on YouTube for you guys if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Brilliant, so with that remember the most important thing is check twice, cut once, bye bye.